Hello and welcome. It's the chat. I am Manny. Now, back in the days, I think uh, to be precise, in the 80s and the 90s, the NTA was the only authority that uh, transmitted network sports programs. And there was only one man who interpreted sports the way most people liked it. He held us spellbound when he did analysis in tennis, boxing, athletics, and all other sports. He's my guest on the program this week. Chuka Moma is one of Nigeria's celebrated sports writer, commentator, historian, a microbiologist and administrator, an indigen of Newi, Anambra State. Chuka had his primary school at Ilefe and Modakeke in the former western region of Nigeria. He is an alumnus of Government College Ibadan, Government Secondary School Oweri, and the University of Nigeria Onsuka, where he studied microbiology. He received cricket colors at college and was captain on the University of Nigeria cricket team that won the 1974 Nuga Games. He was also the president of the International Student Society. Chuka worked for various multinational pharmaceutical conglomerates before retiring to private business in 1985. He has been a regular columnist for various publications and presented sports programs on boxing, athletics, soccer, tennis, and basketball. He served as a member of the Constitution Drafting Committee of the Sports Writers Association of Nigeria, SWAN, and was later chairman of the seven-man electoral committee of the association. He has also served in various organs of the International Tennis Federation, ITF. He has served as the chairman of the Nigeria Tennis Federation and president of the Confederation of African Tennis, CAT. He represented Nigeria and Africa meritoriously as a member of the committee that organized tennis at the Athens Olympics. He is a recipient of the National Sports Merit Award. In 2010, he received the Confederation of African Tennis Award for service to the game. In the same year, he was honored by the Lagos Country Club in recognition of his contributions to the development of the game. Chuka, it's so nice to see you again. Chuka. You're still looking good. Your yeah. age has taken a little bit toll on you. You are even looking better. <laughs> and uh, you are also a, you are a Nigerian original. You went to school in Ibadan, didn't you? Yes, I was at Government College Ibadan. I was at the Great Government College Ibadan. What were you doing in Ibadan? My what uncle was vice principal of Udujua College. And my father was in the Federal Civil Service. and didn't want to keep moving me all over the place, so I stayed, I lived with my uncle. So what were you like in school in Ibadan in those days? Were right. you the quiet? You say I was great. I was law-abiding. Uh, all the time? Yes, virtually all. all, all. <laughs> the only time I remember I broke the rules, it was only once. Okay. We used to act plays with St. Anne's School, Ibadan. They were, you say, our alter ego. And on this day, because we had a new dining hall, and then uh, they said all of us from one to three should go to the old dining hall. So with my classmate, Dr. Boy, it's not Dr. Boy, it's a consultant psychiatrist in England. We said, why should we go to the old dining hall? So we went to the new dining hall, and as we were eating, the prefect of duty, who was called Mackinde, caught us. And we were then uh, reported to the principal. And of course, we had a few strokes of the cane. You were sanctioned. That was the only time. Yeah, we really? were sanctioned. Oh, my goodness. After that, apart from that, GCI was fantastic. I was able to play cricket. I was in the schools, uh, what you call the Colts, Mosquito Cricket Team in Class 3. We played against King's College, Lagos. We played against Ingobi College. We played against St. Greg's College. And in Class 4, I found my way into the first team. Now, come to think of it, you read microbiology, you know, and eventually turned into a sports legend, a historian, a sports commentator, sports analyst, and everything. What, what I mean, how did microbiology turn you into such sports? At GCI. I could. At GCI, we read everything. Don't forget, we are the school that produced the great Walesho Inca, 
uh, 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 so many other great, the great Supreme and Quincy, and uh, so many other great one man one machet. We we had great writers, great scientists, Professor Akin Kube. The the list is endless. So we were encouraged to re read everything. We read everything. I mean, how did you come about microbiology? I was way? fascinated by the idea of microorganisms. They're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't see them, but they play such a huge impact, a huge uh, uh, factor in our lives. Whether the industrial part or the medical part, you know, microorganisms, they're on your skin now. I could tell you quite a few that are right there on your, on your skin, on your hands. Really? Candida, you can see, yeah. yeah. They're all over the place. I won't mention some others. So the, 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 the world of microorganisms is a fascinating world. Why organisms that are so small can play such a massive part, role in the lives of very big people, important people. So yes, yes, I did practice a bit, mostly in the pharmaceutical industry. In the 80s, uh, Chuka, you knew that you were the authority on television, network television, just both for tennis, uh, football, yeah, a bit of football, but mainly tennis, boxing, and the athletics. Nobody could compare with you at that time, you know. And um, which of these ones are you, you know, is your favorite sport? My favorite sport is boxing. Boxing? Yes, my Why? favorite, uh, because it, it, it brings out the best in man. It's such a, I, I, I don't extol boxing because within the last uh, few months, four people have died, uh, but it puts you on the line. Everything comes on the line. I mean, if you are playing tennis, which I play, even today, which I played and administered, if you lose a point, as Sugar Ray Robinson said, it's love 15. In boxing, it could be the end of your life. You, you don't know each other. You just get in the ring and start fighting They're each professionals. Other. It's not just the money that's, in, that's involved. The gentleman who just died, Day, I think it was his name, he had gone to school, good parental background, avenues for great jobs, but he just wanted to be a champion. He just wanted to prove that he could mind over matter, that he could subdue the other guy. Unfortunately, I think his managers mishandled it. Once there's been a knockdown in the, during the bout, it should be watched very carefully. For me, if the knockdown is severe, if there's been concussion, the fight should be stopped. A lot of people have died. Yes. You know, yeah, he was knocked down once, twice, thrice. The third time, he didn't recover. His manager has torn up his boxing ring, and thrown away the people have called for the ban on boxing. You can't ban boxing because, as Albert Camus, the great fighter, said uh, when he was uh, uh, writing about boxing, he said he talked about watching a street fight in Corinth. And he said, they at Corinth, he witnessed two temples, the temple of violence and the temple of opportunity. So many young kids who could have taken to lives of crime have found their salvation in boxing. So many kids who will have been on the streets. And when you look at it, if you watch a great fighter, if you watch a great fighter like the great Shukere Robinson, it's like poetry in motion. If you watch Ali, Cassius Clay, before the ban, before he came back, when he was bigger, slower, and now started calling on all his intrinsic abilities, the ability to take a punch, which is crazy, uh, the so-called rope a dope and all that. It was poetry in motion. You couldn't lay a glove, a glove on him. Even uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. So boxing is like poetry. Those, those were the times I remember. And I recall, you know, uh, Muhammad Ali. And suddenly a certain Mike Tyson burst on the scene. And what happened? Mike Tyson burst on the scene. He was the youngest heavyweight uh, champion in history. The world was at his feet, but he could not conquer himself. In life, it's not just... Is it because he came from the streets? Partly because he came from the streets, but Cos D'Amato, who had managed Floyd Patterson before him, and Jose Torres, provided the shield. He trained him 
gave me everything he wanted, but can you, how many people can conquer their spirits? I mean, when it comes to the crunch, a lot of people will retrogress to what they were. My Tyson could not conquer his spirit. Which Sugar. is your greatest fight? Which of the fights has been the greatest of all? Ali Foreman in Zion. Oh, the, because he the rumble in the jungle. The rumble in the high was the old champion. I would have thought, you know, the I don't thriller know in what, Manila. Yeah. Fine, it was a great fight against Geofrasia. But he was a great champion, almost uh, in the twilight of his career, in his thirties. And George Foreman, the, they were calling him the hardest puncher in the history of boxing. Uh, he punched harder than Sonny Liston. And uh, everybody, including myself, I thought Ali was stupid. My, my thought was, let this man retire with his greatness. Even George Foreman says, champions should retire before they are knocked out. George Foreman had knocked uh, uh, Frazier out twice. First time in second, in, in two rounds. And uh, of course, much later, he knocked him out in five rounds. Knocked out Ken Nothing in two rounds. Ali caught hell with Frazier. He caught hell with Ken Nothing. And uh, we felt Ali should not fight him. He was an old man. But mind over matter. But but that, that was also the period in tennis, okay? When the likes we had at uh, Duka Odizo. And I remember when Odizo got to the fourth round of Wimbledon. I think it was 84. I hope I'm right, 83 mm. or 84. When he got to the fourth round of Wimbledon, having beaten the clay courts expert with Jamo Villas, I had gone to the French Open in 1983 to report the, uh, the tournament for the Ligiwa, uh, Sunday Concord, because he called me and said he wanted me to do it. And Dele was my friend. Before then, I had reported the Wimbledon, I think, 82 for the National Concord, if I remember right. I think I'd also cricket. I think I went to Lourdes. I don't quite remember. This mm. was a long time ago. Mm. The West Indies were played, played the final of the Prudential World Cup against India. Yes, at Lords. And uh, so it, 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 tennis just became a natural sport for me. Who was your tennis number one? Then or now? Then it was, I went through layers of idolation. Yeah. My first idol was Bjorn Borg. Bjorn Borg won. The 11 Grand Slam titles, uh, six French Open titles, five consecutive Wimbledon titles. Could not accept the fact that McEnroe beat him and he lost his number one ranking. So he quit the spot at 26. When Bog left, it was Lendo. Lendo was, I always liked players that were gentle, quiet, not rioters, not John McEnroe for all his talent. So it was Lendo. But uh, Lendy won a Grand Slam tournament, played so many other finals, he lost so many finals. At a stage, he played about eight straight finals. I actually reported Lendo for The Guardian at the Nabisco Masters, New York, Manhattan, uh, Madison Square Garden in 1987. And uh, I remember that particular tournament because uh, I was writing my heart out and uh, I had a problem with one of the girls who was reporting the who was supposed to be sending our reports. Because I'd written something like I said, I'm at Madison Square Garden, the mecca of boxing, but now apparently of tennis. And I'm looking ahead, and I can see pendants hanging, proclaiming New York Knicks world champions, because they won the NBA, National Basketball Association of America tournament. And I said, world champions for a tournament only held in America, who do they think they are? <laughs> How can you be world champions since the tournament only held in America? When I sent my report, the girl who was supposed to send it by telex, there was no fax then, it was telex, old, said she was not going to send it. Nina Potter was her name. And I said, why? I said, because I had to remove the, the sections on the audience was boisterous and noisy and who, uh, why should they be world champion? And I said, no. You pick it, you read out the question. Hmm. I hope it's not a trick question. Well, see what it is. What is your coping mechanism and when do you have a bad day? 
Yes. Can I answer? Yes, please. Uh, my coping mechanism has always been, and I'm not being hypocritical, but to recognize and realize that everything that has a, a beginning must have an end. And so life as we know it, however great, I have so many heroes who have passed on. So I recognize the fact that no matter what, it will end. It's only a question of time. And having said that, what I do is to try and go and play tennis. I play plenty of tennis and uh, I read a lot. But what's your Pastor. biggest weakness? I think it's... You think? I like, I, li I like very good food. I always did. Really? My mother knew that. What could that be? Uh, I've cut off a lot of it. it then it was uh, fried plantain, sugar-based food cakes. I've cut everything out. I had to, as I grow older, no more oils, no fried plantain, no sugar, no salts. Uh, so what's what? a typical no cakes. What's, a, what's a typical meal for you now? Uh, grilled fish. Yeah. No oil. Uh, I like seafood. Grilled prawns, grilled fish. If it has to be meat, chicken with the skin removed. Uh, lean meat. Uh, cut off all the fat like goat meat. And if that really... If you, keep it, to, if, and, if, and, if you keep to this, you're going to live forever. Yes, and uh, this my soup, no, not a drop of oil. Really? And I will shock you because I grew up in Ilefe. I like my amala. Oh, you still eat you know, amala? Yes, yes, amala. But the soup, maybe begri, which is soup made with uh, beans, it may be a wedu. There must not be a drop of oil. All the, the finer trimmings of cakes and... Uh, uh, just name it, you know, all those sweet things. No soft drinks, no cakes, but I like cognac. Is there I, anything most... And red wine. You do? Yeah. Is there anything most of your friends... And you just witnessed not, it. ...do anyway. not know about you, that you're about to tell me now? I'm like an open book. Uh, my real friends, friends that I love from the bottom of my heart, you know, those who... Uh, you could follow blindfolded. I don't think because I've never believed that there's anything in this world so nobody else has done. So there's no need for arrogance. Whoever you think you are, somebody else has done it. So I don't see the need for one to think too much of himself. I think we're just there. And uh, friends usually are helpful. Uh, I, do, I don't really think uh, in other words, I think nothing of myself. I think I have no complexes, whether superiority or, or inferiority. I think the important thing is to try to be happy, cultivate good friends, I believe in, in, in the Lord God Allah. Let's even look at your days in, on television, wasn't it? That you presented sports, spectacular. I mean, you came to national attention on that program. Everybody knew who you were. Everybody expected you know, the best analysis on sports. And you didn't disappoint people. Where did you pick up that program from? And how did it happen? Well, I've, I've seen it happen, I believe, on ESPN, uh, where they had their best commentators. The same thing. And I thought it was good. And then Yinka Craig, NTA, came out with big fights of the decade. Okay. And I was invited, of course, as a color commentator. But after a while, the gentleman who was the coordinator, I think of Saze, or, or Baze, you know, okay. if I remember right, he couldn't continue the program. And I thought the program was too good to allow to die. So I said, instead of that, I then took up the mantle. I will go to the US, I will go to England, I went to the IAF, the International Amateur Athletic Federation. I went to FIFA. I went to Boss Hornet group for the Grand Slam tennis. I went to the NBA in America. 
and I, I, I discuss with them. And what I would do would be to pay for the, for the rights in foreign exchange and then come back here and present the programs. Of course, along the way, my company will also look for sponsors to help with the programs to defray most of our costs. So that's what happened. That's what I did. You but know. you ran the program for how many years? Uh, I think it went on for about, about seven years. It was, it was tedious. I believe it went on for about, uh, about seven years. Why did, must, must you, have been about, why did you give it up? Well, by 1991, January, I became president of the Nigerian Tennis Federation. It was a huge task. It was an honorary task. It was an, then an, appoint, an appointed task. It was a national service. Initially, I thought I could combine both of them, but it proved very difficult. Do you have children? Yeah, 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 I have children. Do they you, do, do they, you know, are they into sports like you? Yeah, they play tennis, but not at really? championship level. They are nice how, kids. How many are there? Well, there are two of them. Uh, twelve? Two of them, not twelve. <laughs> not twelve. <laughs> if you, you'll be talking about my brothers and sisters, then you can say, oh, yeah. because uh, there were nine from my mother. So oh, really? It's, it's, it's okay, and... Uh, If you were cast away on an island and you were asked to take five vital things along with you, what would they be? Mm. That is a tough question. There must be some source of water supply, which I can carry along. I'm on an island. I assume there'll be mosquitoes if one could have a mosquito net, uh, a fishing hook, so at least I could fish. Um, if I could have traps because of small animals that come around, um, what else would I want? If I could have a source of proteins, stockfish, stockfish for instance, plenty of food that I could at least keep eating and keeping alive until I could get out of the island, I think that would be it. That, does not, that will not guarantee the fact that I will get out with my life, but at least I could postpone the inevitable for a while. I could stay alive until I will plead with Almighty God to accept my soul in heaven. Hopefully, maybe after about, uh, because I think with all that, I could survive for maybe about four months, after which I will see you in heaven. <laughs> I don't wish to, you know, meet you in heaven now. Thank you so much, Chica, for thank you, being thank on the program. You, you're a great sport. Anyway, it's, it's been fun talking to you. And uh, my God, I haven't seen you in a long time, a very long time. Yes, and there are the and, books and I have to present to you. Oh, really? While we're still on television, this is a personal account of the Great Ali. Oh. Which I've endorsed to you. Wow. And uh, I, I think I should read my endorsement okay. to you. I believe I have said here, Mani, you are a Nigerian original. Regards, Chuka. Ah. And then uh, Sports Spectacular covers different sports. Golf, boxing, lawn tennis, basketball, track and field. And those are the areas you cover. Yes, you yes. Sports. And I've simply said, Mani, Congratulations for your immense services to the journalism profession in Nigeria. Regards, Chukamoma. Wow. Amani, I feel it is, it is my pleasure I feel really to present this to and you. I appreciate this. Thank yes. you, Chuka. You have done quite a lot for journalism in this country. Thank you very I'm, much. I'm honored, in fact, to talk with you as well. <laughs> Thank you, Chuka. Long may you live. Long may you live too. It's been Chuka Moma and the program The Chat. I am Manny. So long. The Chat is produced by Channels Television. You can watch it again online. Just visit our social media platforms. Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Mm -hmm.